tibial artery stenosis is something that uh, is a pretty frequent disease, and it's actually almost as common as the internal carotid artery uh, atherosclerosis and stenosis. But nonetheless, it never has received the same level of recognition uh, that it should. And patients who actually develop ischemic stroke related to vertebral artery stenosis uh, have a pretty high rate of death or disability. So it's clearly something, a high risk of recurrence with strokes, um, clearly a high risk of death and disability. And nonetheless, we've never really systematically evaluated what should we do with these patients who have these severe uh, vertebral artery stenosis. And um, so basically, you know, there have been some trials. Um, the issue has always been the number of patients in these small trials have been, uh, you know, the number of patients is just not large enough to do anything conclusive. And also it became clear that, uh, you know, not every patient with vertebral artery stenosis will benefit from an invasive procedure. Uh, so I think we have to narrow that population to those who actually can truly benefit uh, from uh, an invasive procedure like stent placement. Now, stent placement for vertebral artery stenosis has been there for almost 30 years. So it's been a procedure that's out there um, and clearly can be done. I think the general agreement among interventionists is that it can be done with a low risk of stroke or death associated with the procedure. Uh, but nonetheless, um, we have to identify the appropriate patients who could benefit from such a procedure. Uh, so this analysis was really trying to select the patients who are most likely to benefit from uh, stent placement, those who have uh, severe vertebral artery stenosis. And uh, what we were able to find is, yes, there is a patient population where stent placement appears to be beneficial as compared to best medical treatment, which actually involves a combination of antiplatelet agents and anti-cholesterol medication and blood pressure treatment. And that patient population was those who actually had a true ischemic stroke. So, you know, sometimes patients who have transient ischemic attacks the presentation may be vague enough that's not easy to differentiate whether it was truly an ischemic event or something that was unrelated. So obviously patients who have an unrelated event are unlikely to have the same risk of stroke like those who have a true ischemic event. So, you know, only selecting those who actually had a true ischemic stroke, so where there's a very clear understanding that there is an ischemic event related to the vertebral artery stenosis. And the second thing that, you know, is something that we had anticipated that patients who have vertebral artery stenosis, the risk of actually having another stroke is really very early on, meaning perhaps most likely in the first month. So if we're gonna take these patients and treat them, let's say six or eight weeks after their ischemic event, we've already missed the period of maximum benefit. So we also narrowed it down to only patients who actually were treated within one month of being randomized. And if you put these two characteristics together, so patients who actually had an ischemic stroke related to vertebral artery stenosis, and essentially uh, being treated within the first month, you can actually start seeing a benefit of stent placement over medical treatment, pretty dramatic benefit. Now, granted that um, uh, you know this is a small number of patients, so really statistical significance was you know for more of a trend rather than statistical significance, which would be expected given the long number, gives us some way forward that if we are going to do a trial, the next trial, what kind of patients should be included in that trial so that we can demonstrate the benefit of stent placement over best medical treatment. Uh, one other thing to mention is that we are talking about extracranial vertebral artery stenosis, so we're not really talking about intracranial vertebral artery stenosis. So I think that it's just, that's an important distinction because the extracranial vertebral artery stenosis is one disease where the risk, or the one month stroke and death risk with stent placement is kind of relatively low as compared to the higher rate that you see with intracranial procedures. So the question here is that where do we go from here? Uh, I think that, you know, one, we have identified a patient population with extracranial vertebral artery stenosis that can potentially benefit from stent placement. Obviously, this is more of a hypothesis generating analysis, not a definitive conclusive analysis, but it does actually guide us to what kind of patient population uh, is most likely to benefit from stent placement. And that's the kind of patient population we need to include in a future randomized clinical trial. It also gives us some sense of the magnitude of benefit. That's something important for a sample size calculation in the future trial. 
So I do think that, you know, it has value. Um, I don't think it's enough to just change our practice outright, but it definitely gives us guidance on what is required to get to that point.